Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Friday the 8th of March and this quick look at the week ahead beginning the 11th of March and the recent rally in European markets appears to have finally run out of steam. This week investors have started to take profits over concerns. The macroeconomic backdrop is much weaker than was thought to be the case a few weeks ago and that whatever the outcome of a US-China trade deal which is still expected to be signed off at some point over the course of the next two to three weeks, it won't be enough to mitigate a broader economic slowdown. Now we can see this, we can see how this has played out in equity markets over the course of the past few days. We weren't able to get above this 11,700 level that I've been ta that I was talking about two to three weeks ago, and that I was targeting for a move higher in the DAX. We've seen a significant pullback off that. And above that, obviously, the 200-day moving average has also acted as a significant resistance level as well. It looks quite likely that we could well post a bearish engulfing week on the weekly charts, and that would could well be potentially negative in the longer term as the DAX looks to test the trend line from the lows that we've seen in December. Or if we look at the S&P 500, We've also seen a similar failure on that at that 2820 level that I again highlighted a few weeks ago. We've run into a little bit of a wall up there and we've now also dropped back below the 200 day moving average. So while momentum is still fairly positive, I think there is potential for um, further losses back towards 2700 in the short to medium term. Um, so, so that's, I think, really um, the outlook for equity markets more broadly a little bit of weakness potentially a little bit of sell the rally is starting to creep in and i think we do need to be cognizant of that going forward if we look at again the FTSE 100 again we found a little bit of a peak out around about the middle of february um, we have moved lower to around about just above the 7,050 level um, and we haven't been able to get back above 7,200. Now that's not to say that we can't get back above there but if we drop below 7050 then we could be in line for further weakness. On the plus side the shorter term moving averages, the 50 day moving averages are starting to slope upwards so it would be surprising if we saw a significant thrust lower but nonetheless we do appear to be consolidating at these levels and as such we could find further upward progress a little bit difficult until such times as we take out 7200. It's also been a very difficult week for the euro in the light of the announcement of the new TLTRO which is due to start in September later this year and the thing that struck me about that ladies and gentlemen was the fact that the ECB felt that they needed to pre-announce it which would appear to suggest that they don't have an awful lot of confidence that there will be a significant recovery in the eurozone over the course of the next six months which suggests to me that we could be in line for further euro dollar weakness now obviously a lot will depend on what the dollar does with respect to that and this afternoon's non-farm payrolls at the moment as I record this video, I don't have sight of those numbers, but I would be very surprised if they weren't at all, or they didn't at least hold up to the levels that we've become used to of around about to the average of 200,000 jobs per month. We did see a big jump in January jobs to 304,000, fairly decent number, but I think a large part of that number was skewed by a big jump in part time workers as a result of the US government shutdown. We've got a whole host of US economic data out later this coming week with the latest US CPI numbers and US retail sales. Now US retail sales for January should um, shed some light on the really shocking number that we saw in December. We saw a 1.2% decline in December. There could be an adjustment to that number but even so expectations for January retail sales on the 11th of March are for a 0% reading. It's also important to remember that this coming week US economic data will be out an hour early as US goes to daylight saving over this coming weekend. So all US data that's normally out at 1.30 it will now be out at 12.30 GMT. So it's important to be aware of that. US CPI is out on Tuesday on the 12th and that's for February and that's expected to remain steady at 2.2 percent. So I think in terms of US inflationary pressures generally keep an eye out 
on the US numbers for signs of potentially wage inflation and that's something that I'll be keeping a close eye out on the payrolls numbers but I'll also be looking to um, the UK as well because it's a big week for the UK economy. When isn't it a big week for the UK economy you may ask and that is certainly a very good question because we've got we've now got or we expect to we expect to get another attempt at a meaningful vote um, on Theresa May's Brexit deal. We also have the UK spring statement and certainly in terms of the economy um, tax receipts have been fairly robust despite the fact that there's been an awful lot of scepticism around being able to arrive at some form of deal. Now it is true business investment has dried up and it's not likely to get freed up any time soon but all the dark warnings that we've had in the run-up to the June 2016 referendum and the aftermath have thus far failed to materialise. The Chancellor does have fiscal headroom. The spring statement is on the Wednesday, it's on the 13th of March but I think it's going to be very hard for the Chancellor to really give any indication as to what his spending plans are likely to be given the fact that I think all the focus is going to be on any potential meaningful votes and any attempts by MPs to try and push through an extension to Article 50 and that's a very very high bar because ultimately as things stand at the moment the default position is the UK leaves the European Union on the 29th of March under statutory under the under the terms of the statutory legislation that is currently in place MPs will need to coalesce around a, 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 a majority to overturn that um, overturn that outcome and that's a big bar that's a high bar and I certainly don't think it's something that the markets have even closely remarked closely started to price in. I still think there's an expectation that somehow they'll push it through but what we have seen in euro sterling is a significant break lower in the cross. Sterling strength euro weakness. So I think that is likely to continue until such times as we're able to push back above 86.20, 86.30. While we're below 86.20, 86.30 the direction of travel is for further sterling strength, further euro weakness. Now how that plays out you know really isn't a problem or isn't something that really dominates my thinking. For me it's about the price action and while we're below 86.20, 86.30 then the downward projection or the downward move that we're seeing in euro sterling is likely to continue. We look at these lower highs, we look at these lower lows, the direction of travel on a break below 85.20 is likely to be further losses down towards these last lows here. The euro is looking structurally weak at this point in time. It is not a zero-sum game and no-deal Brexit. It could be equally as damaging for the euro area. But there are concerns that obviously all of this paralysis over Brexit, concerns about China-US trade, concerns about EU-US trade, because now there's concerns that the US may implement tariffs on EU exports is having a significantly negative effect on overall market sentiment. And that's before we even start looking at the latest Chinese data, which is due out later this week, in the coming week rather, Chinese retail sales, Chinese industrial production. Now, it's very important not to read too much into this February data. We saw the latest Chinese trade data, very disappointing for February, but we have to price, you have to set that against the fact that it's Chinese Lunar New Year, an awful lot of the country was shut down. And as such, that will have a significantly negative effect on the Chinese numbers for retail sales and industrial production for February, which are due out on the 14th of March. So it's not going to make things any more positive but also it doesn't necessarily mean that China is falling off a cliff so I think there needs to be a certain amount of measured analysis when it comes to the China data but certainly I think it's unlikely that we'll see a significant pick up there. we have also expecting to see a number of fairly low-key earnings announcements they will be um, on the weekly market update so um, look, look out for that on the website um, but as we look to the week ahead the key events that I'm keeping an eye out for this week are in summary the UK the next potential UK meaningful vote on the withdrawal agreement a potential article 50 extension the UK spring statement UK GDP industrial production and manufacturing production for January US retail sales China data and US CPI so that's it for this week 
Thank you very much for listening. It's Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets.